Hello friends, welcome back to DIY Guitar Making here in my shop at Eric Schaefer Guitars in Burnville, Pennsylvania. I have some really cool news. I will be attending the Woodstock Luthiers Invitational Showcase. It's sort of a mouthful of words, so I always see if I can get that right. The Woodstock Invitational Luthiers Showcase. They have it every year in October, and this year it is October 13th through 15th, so three days, and it's actually pretty cheap. I think $25 per day if you're just going for one day, you can get a day pass, pay $25. If you are coming for all three days, I think it's just $60. Very inexpensive to come check out a really cool showcase of luthiers. Some of the best luthiers around the world will be showcasing there, so I'm very excited to just walk around and see those people myself. So I'll be there, I'll be exhibiting some of my guitars, uh, I'll also be selling radio rosette makers, and I'll just be there to, you know, chat with people. So I'll be in the Utopia Sound Stage. There's two buildings on the sort of compound there at the Bearsville Center. So by the way, this is in Woodstock, New York, the Bearsville Center in Woodstock, New York, which by the way, is the same Woodstock with the music and the drugs and the dancing in the mud. I don't think this event will be about any of that, but who knows, maybe uh, after hours. So anyway, come check it out. There's live music, there's guitar clinics, uh, tone wood suppliers are there, tool you know, manufacturers and, and stuff like that. Although it's not really for the luthiers, it's more about players and about the gu exhibiting the guitars themselves. So of course, the, the sort of main event is just walking around the showcase and seeing all the great builders and the great works that they've created. So lastly, I will say, if you are just getting into this crazy Luthery thing, you really definitely should go <laughs> check this out because uh, if nothing else, it's just inspiring. So that brings me to what this video and probably the next several videos are going to be about. I have decided that I'm going to use this event to really push myself to get two guitars done. One, uh, you've already seen that parlor guitar that I have in the finishing room right now. You might think that that's already done, but once you get through finishing, there's always a couple little extra things you have to do. So I just want to get that ready before the show. And then also really ambitious here, the next guitar, guitar number 87, is not even close to being completed and finished right now. And I'm going to see if I can work manically like a lunatic here in the shop and get both of these ready for the showcase, which again is October 13th, 14th, and 15th in Woodstock, New York. Right now it is September 21st, and actually right before the showcase, I'm going on vacation for a week. So really I only have about two weeks to get this done, not to mention dealing with all the other things that I just have to deal with uh, running my business here and getting ready for the show. So. Very, very precious little time. I don't even know if it's possible. There's a good chance I will push hard against impossible odds and just fail in the end anyway. Uh, but hey, that's always fun to, for you guys to watch on camera, right? Everybody likes a good dumpster fire. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if I can get this done. Okay, so most of the work that has to be done is on guitar number 87 right here. Guitar number 86 is hanging in the finishing room. I've really only got a couple more coats to do on that before I can call the finish good. We'll address that later on, but right now we really have to get a move on on this guy right here. Last night I pushed it pretty hard and earlier in the day got all the binding on there, but then uh, also sanded back the binding and, and the purfling and you can see everything came out pretty good. So that's good. And we can turn our attention now to the neck joint. Before I start in the neck joint, I have to get a heel cap on here. Now this heel is so excessively long here simply because I screwed up at one point and I cut my heel down at the wrong place in order to put my heel cap on. And it was cut too low. So I just slapped another piece of mahogany on there to build it back up and now I have to 
do that cut again, and this time do it right. Now, honestly, I should say this is the kind of thing where you could actually just completely start over with your neck blank if you were to make a mistake like that. That way you won't have any sort of visible joint between these two pieces, but you know, if you do that joint right between these two pieces, it can become virtually uh, impossible to see. So it's really a, it's just a decision that has to be made. I guess it's up to how, you know, picky or finicky you want to be with that sort of thing. But anyway, this tall heel just begs an explanation. So there you have it. And that's where we're going to start. Let's cut this down. While we're waiting for the glue to dry on the heel cap that we just glued up there, we can go ahead and get started setting up for our mortise and tenon. So a couple things we'll need. First of all, we need our center line, which is the same as our book matched joint. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to rediscover where your joint is. So I like to find it in a couple different places. That way, if I find it in a couple different places, I can take a straight edge and line it up. And because I have several marks, if one or two of these marks doesn't line up, then I know I'll have to go back to the drawing board and recheck my marks. But all of these are right on, so I'm confident that that is the old joint. So I've got my center line. The other thing I need is my saddle location. That's gonna help us set the distance off of the saddle location that we want the plane of the neck to be targeting. So what I need right now is the distance from my 13th fret, because this is a 13 frets to the body instrument, which is a bit strange, but just deal with it. <laughs> it's a 13 frets to the body instrument. So I need the distance from the neck to body joint fret, the 13th fret, to the end of our scale length. So, math. I have to go do some math, uh, which really means I, I have to use the calculator on my phone. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna get my little saddle mark on there, and then I will meet you guys over at the mortise and tenon cutting jig that I have. Uh, it's a jig by a company called Luthier Tool, not a sponsor or anything, but yeah, I know Everybody literally always asks in the comments, what is that thing? So I'm telling you right now, the company's called Luthier Tool. It's a great jig. And actually taking a break from guitar number 87, two hours has passed and it is now time to come over to guitar number 86 and apply another coat of true oil. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got my true oil mixture, which I cut with mineral spirits by 25%. And I've got my two pads my carrot, and my main French polish pad here. Take that down off the rack. And uh, I actually love this flow of things. What I'm doing right now, which is having one guitar in the finishing room while working sort of at the later stages of the next guitar. In fact, if I could plan everything perfectly, I would kind of always have a guitar in the finishing room while I'm working on the other guitars. I don't know why. I think I just like working on something and actually being forced to take a break from it to go do this for about, you know, 25 minutes and then going back into the main part of the workshop and uh, getting dusty again. It's fun.
Okay, so now back to setting up for a mortise and tenon. I've already gone through the sort of finicky process of setting up the alignment here. Just to put it in a nutshell, the way that this works is after a little bit of setup and fiddling with the jig, you then uh, set up the primary aspect of this jig, which is to tilt this table at the appropriate angle so that you get a predetermined measurement right off of your saddle mark. And in this case, on this 13 frets to the body parlor guitar, again, this is a much smaller guitar, a much smaller scale length, at least in terms of uh, how small and large scale lengths are for acoustic guitars, eh, which isn't that much. But anyway, smaller guitar means the distance off of the saddle is going to be less than it normally is for, say, an orchestra model or a triple O, which is what I'm used to doing. So this distance here is uh, very small. It's 58 thousandths of an inch. I've already got that all set up. So, and this is locked. Most importantly, I've locked the jig in place. So I can now remove this and we can go ahead and route out the mortise and route out the tenon. Let's do it. Alright, so there we have it. On a typical Martin style guitar, you would actually be done at this point. But, because I like to have these extra wide heels, I have to follow it up at this point with a different template. I just call my cleanup template because this is just a wide open insert here which will allow me to run the router all around the outside edges here and clean all this up. Now there's nothing keeping me from drifting in and hitting the tenon except for the fact that there's a very large moat here of relieved material. So I just have to not be completely asleep at the wheel and uh, come in towards that tenon, which is very easy to do. Okay, so I'm going to take the router and clean all that up and I'll spare you guys uh, the details of that. Okay, well a bit of a short day guitar building wise because I had something come up uh, business wise that I need to need to do. But we got the mortise and tenon done, and there's a lot of setup and fiddling with that that I didn't even capture on camera. So that's great. It's great to get sort of past that step. Uh, let's see, what else did we do today? We got the heel cap on, and uh, on the other guitar, I did some uh, coats throughout the day uh, while I was doing this work. So I feel pretty good about that, especially with the limited time. And the stool I'm sitting in keeps dropping. <laughs> I have to fix this stool. It just kind of slowly uh, sinks on me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to keep this sort of high speed game of Luthery going here. And in the next couple episodes, I'm really interested to see just how, how it's going to work out working at this pace. Am I going to make it? I don't know. We'll see. Probably not. But we're going to try. All right, see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania. <laughs>